Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel and the Golden Opportunities Coaching YouTube channel. If you're looking for life, business, relationship, golden coaching, please go over to the Golden Opportunities channel. Subscribe, would help us out. I'm trying to reach a thousand people to make a major difference in our world. Anyway, um, but as far as this is concerned, the 16th of March uh, edition of Impact certainly shows that there is a major difference between Impact and the other two national companies, of course, being AEW and WWE. Um, so they have this new BTI before the Impact pre-show thing, which to me screams we're oversaturating because we want to feel relevant. I don't agree with this. Anyway, Black Taurus with Decay defeats Luster the Legend on that. Um, opening uh, show basically shows video recap of Sacrifice, including Finjuice winning the Tag Team Championships. Rich Swan is out there, and he's obviously winning the... Um, unifying the TNA belt with Moose. And uh, so the Impact Tag Team Champions, Finn Juice, David Finley, and Juice Robinson defeats Triple XL, AC Romero, and Larry D in a non-title match. Not necessarily sure why you do non-title here. I can't imagine that they're going to go far with this little feud. Uh, they've added some camera shakes during the entrance of Triple XL, basically implying they're extra fat. Um... Match basically sees Finn Juice dominate early. They hit a couple of double team moves on D. Romero tags in, and the size difference obviously gets the better of the champions. Robinson takes some offense uh, at the hands of Romero. Robinson escapes, tags to Finley. Uh, Finn Juice hits a double flapjack on D and an acid drop by Finley for the win. Uh, it was fine, but it, again, it shows the, the lack of depth in their tag division. These are your new champions, and this is how you shine them? Eh, not really a fan. Post-match, uh, Anderson and Gallows come out. They confront Finn Juice. Anderson asks them if they're happy to have won against a team that wasn't on at 100%. They said they've been jumping between Dynamite and Impact. Hung over and jet lagged, and Gallows challenged them for a rematch when Robinson quickly accepted. Finju said they would have, have to wait for April, and they said they'd be back when they had uh, finished the New, Gen New Japan Cup tour. Anderson and Gallows are annoyed that they'd have to wait, attack Finju, Finley and Robinson dodge them, and leaves them hanging. Not bad. D'Lo Brown and Matt Stryker run down tonight's card. Still, I think they're the best announced team in wrestling, although Shivani and Big Show are quickly on their heels after only one broadcast. Promo from Sammy Callahan talking about how Trey Miguel is a phony and a fake, and he lacks passion. Miguel uh, says he, he basically says Mat uh, Miguel pretends to be passionate. He says he, he'll embarrass him tonight and make an example out of him. Um, eh. Sammy Callahan's flat to me. Like, I don't... When he had an edge back when they were doing the Tessa Blanchard thing, I guess you could say he was carrying the company. Now, he really screams afterthought. Anderson and Gallows go to Dean Moore to complain about their situation. Dean Moore says Finn Juice will defend the titles at Rebellion on April 24th. Um... Dean Moore says that Finn Juice would be defending the titles in Japan, which, if it's true, that's cool. If not, well, then why lie? Dreamer comes up to Dean Moore, too. He brings up that they don't have tag titles now. And this is a mess. Dean Moore said it's a good price to have a working relationship with a promotion that used to hate them. Well... Uh, if you've contributed to the flippy, floppy, floopy nature of what wrestling became today, most people would hate you too. Anyway, um, so, and Dan Moore says that this wasn't easy, so if Dreamer thought he could do better, then he should book the next Impact plus special Hardcore Justice. Dreamer gave 
Dean Moore some ideas. Why are we still using Hardcore Justice all these years later? Rhino with Violent by Divine Design beat Jake something with James Storms and Chris Sabian. I don't know. Not a fan of Rhino turning, but it is what it is. Rhino turned at Sacrifice a few days ago, and he runs down, helps Dorian and Diener defeat them. They did about two or three minutes of wrestling here. Beer guns and VVD start brawling around the ring and allows Rhino to get a gore and a win. Post-match brawl continues. Rhino gores everyone. Violent by design. Standing tall. I don't know. I mean, I assume this is leading to some sort of Rage in a Cage, ECW, 1997 Smaz that should have ended, I don't know, in 1997. Um, backstage, Tennille Dashwood wants to get her team for tonight to be called Tennille and her followers. Um, Pizarro wanted to offer the team guidance, but is interrupted by Kira Hogan and Steeles who are tag team specialists, and they have advice. Pizarro calms things down and said they're all the best and insist on going back moving forward. They needed to do their thing and win like they always do. We hit Raju, Raju against uh, Shira. I don't know. The, the breakup of this just screams indie talent. Riffic. Anyway. Um... So, Raju brings him back and then turns on him. Uh, this was looking to be another squash. Match actually goes back and forth a little bit. Uh, Raju keeps getting offense. Sure refuses to quit. Speed versus power match. Good clash of styles. Raju being able to dodge and stick and move is decent. Raju then drops him with power moves. And Raju gets a roll-up on Shira with his feet on the ropes. Gets a cheating win. Uh, they're going to obviously continue the feud. Willie Mack congratulates Rich Swan for defeating Moose. Swan said it wasn't time for a party. He had business in the ring. Swan comes out to the ring. He said he may not like Moose, but he respected him. And he respected what they'd done at Sacrifice. And he said Moose went all out. And showed what impact is about. Now Swan has a, he is a double champion. Uh, Swan addresses Kenny Omega, and he'd been dragging a pin loss to Omega uh, since January, and now he had a chance to get get it back. And they would show the real best wrestler in the world is certainly it's not Rich Swan and it's not Kenny Omega. I don't know who it is, but I don't think it's either one of them. Uh, John Callis comes out, congratulates Swan with his shiny toy. Omega is the new, has a new shinier toy, and Callis starts getting in Swan's head a bit, talking about how Swan would likely have been celebrating for a month, uh, thinking about the one winged angel he took to the back of the head. He keeps telling Swan that he, uh, was once a... Big deal, but Omega is one in a millennium. Uh, Callus has been around every big Omega moment, and at, and at Rebellion, he'd be there along with Swan as they both witness history. When Omega hits the one wicked angel and wins, um, Don Callis might very well be the best promo in wrestling right now. Weekly AEW commercial, Tony Khan, Tony Schiavone run down the card for St. Patrick's Day. Tony Schiavone will interview Sting, and Sting will say the same thing he's always been saying backstage. Eddie Edwards thanked uh, Matt Cardona for having his back last month. Myers walks up, talks about Cardona, who told him to stop going after him and Edwards. Uh, Myers tells him he didn't want Cardona on Impact because this was his promotion. He wanted to do it himself. Jordana Grace... Wow, this is this is just a cluster mess. Um, so Jordana Grace, Jazz, Alicia, Havoc, Nevaeh, and ODB defeated Perazzo, 
uh, Fire and Flav, Hogan and Steels, Susan, Kimberly, and Tennille Dashwoods. Why they do a 10-woman match in, in any promotion, I don't know. It, it, I don't like multi-person matches. I've made that perfectly clear. But with differing skill levels and just it looks spot, 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 really not a good look. Alicia um, basically is their match starts with a couple of pair-ups. Baby faces get a little control early. Dashwood versus Alicia ODV and Susan, Nevaeh, and Lee. Havoc and Hogan, Jazz, and Perrazzo. Uh, everybody does take turns, come in, hit moves. There's no psychology to any of this. It's cool to watch if you want to watch wrestling school women work if you're looking for story there really isn't much um and then there's a big brawl on the outside of the ring double dive by grace and steals uh back from commercial referee regains some control everyone's back in the ring but grace and lee start to take turns t- doing spots again Ending with Jazz submitting Kimberly with the STF. It's nothing of great value. Um, Jazz might get a shot at Perrazzo somewhere down the road. That's one way they could go with it. Uh, Jim Miller interviews new X Division champion Ace Austin and the best person on the show. Uh, Ace Austin says that things were back to normal now that he's regained his championship. Defeated TJP. Uh, Chris Bay and Josh Alexander interrupted Austin. Uh, He said both both of them had beaten Austin in the past. TJP then walked up and said he was told to go to the back of the line. TJP said he's getting his rematch next week. So he didn't need to wait like the rest. Uh, Brown and Striker run down next week's card, including including TJP Ace Austin's rematch and Deanna Peraza versus Jazz in a non-title match and Carl Anderson versus Eddie Edwards. That could be fun. Uh, Sammy Callahan defeats Trey Miguel. Uh, Match starts with Miguel going nuts on Callahan in and out of the ring, basically... Diving and bounding around like a cruiserweight, he manages to dodge and counter everything. Callahan's throwing at him. He does look better than Callahan, which is trying to build somebody. Not a bad idea. Uh, Goes for the 619. Callahan catches him, cut him off, and turn things around to his advantage. Callahan works over Miguel's ankle for a bit and uh, locks it between the metal frame and the ring post. Tosses him from corner to corner, puts him in ankle locks. Callahan gets a bit cocky and then starts taking his time with trash talking. Gets hit with an enziguri. Um, Still hurting, Miguel makes a half-hearted comeback. He can't stay on his feet because of the leg injury. And um, he keeps going for foot stomps for some reason that doesn't make sense. Last couple of minutes, both men are back and forth uh and then match ends with callahan hitting a package pile driver for the win uh miguel manages to fail at the meteora i guess the story is going to be that finally when miguel uh does beat callahan one two three in the middle we're supposed to care match went way too long miguel is decent but spotty at best and um next week miguel uh, we'll obviously react to losing, Callahan will gloat, and we will continue with what was going to be a better show, but yeah, it's just, it, with, there's almost too much wrestling on now, and when I compare it with week-to-week television, even with squash matches, at least I know where characters are going, and I feel like I get something from it. These shows, I watch two hours, and I feel like I've been through a car crash, Anyway, till next time, keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment.